Christ. Amen. Over the last few years, as you've gotten to know me, you've probably discovered I hate meetings. <laughs> I really hate meetings. Of my whole pastoral ministry, meetings have been the thing I've disliked the most. People get off track. They're always not listening to what other people are saying, and then they say something totally off the wall. Sometimes people just keep going on and on, and it's like, oh, come on. It took five words, and you took 98 words. Sometimes it seems people have their own agendas when they come to a meeting, and they're not going to be happy till their agenda gets met. To me, meetings oftentimes last twice as long, if not three times as long as they ought to. But that doesn't mean I don't like talking. I like to preach. I love to have a conversation one-on-one -on -one with somebody. In fact, I am willing to talk deep into the night with somebody about some great subject that we want to talk about. And I can wake up refreshed in the morning. Deep conversation is really important if we're to communicate with one another. And something like that happened in the gospel meeting this morning. For the last few weeks, we've been in the upper room with Jesus and the disciples as he's preparing them for what is to come in the next few hours. And so today, we've gotten to that point where he's finally going to say goodbye. And that's pretty hard. Jesus is having this conversation, and he's telling them, yes, we've gotten very close, but I'm going to go away. And the Holy Spirit's going to come into your life. You're going to become close to him. You're going to become close to the work that I'll leave you to do. And we all know that saying goodbye is never easy. Think of a moment when you had to say goodbye that was not easy. Maybe you dropped your kid off at college. Or you took your mom to skilled care. Or your best friend uh, left for another job in another city. Or worse yet, the feelings I'm feeling this week as a year ago, I had to say goodbye to Cheryl. Somehow the death of your spouse or your parent or a sibling is a really hard goodbye. Somehow you cannot help but compare what life was like before and what life is going to be like now. You're overwhelmed not by the presence of a person, but by their absence. What would the world be like without Jesus? Well, for the disciples, they began to think, without him, we'll no longer be able to see him. We'll no longer be able to watch him heal the sick, let the lame walk. No longer are we going to hear his words of compassion. We're no longer going to hear him talk about the kingdom of God and his love for all people and for us. We're not going to have that strength that he seems to give us when we walk with him. Jesus is going away. They're going to be left behind in a world that they do not want to really be in without him. But Jesus is not only going away, he's going to be killed. His death will fall, become, happen because of persecution. His followers will become under attack because of Jesus. They themselves will be killed. Jesus is going to leave them in a world that is not safe to live in. But Jesus tells his disciples, my going away is a good thing. It's for your advantage. How can a loved one leaving us be a good thing? But Jesus says, however, I'm telling you the truth. It's good for you that I'm going away. If I don't go away, the helper won't come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Jesus knows that he's not just going to die. But three days later, he'll rise from the dead. His death on the cross is, will be the victory over sin, death, and the devil. That sin which plagues people. That sin which caused God to flood the earth. To rain down fire and brimstone on people. To send his people into exile because they rejected him. Sin will be set right for all the world. 
all of God's anger and all of God's judgment will be laid on Jesus and he'll carry it to the cross. He'll rise from the dead and he'll bring to us God's grace, God's promise of life, and all the goodness that God can give us. When Jesus goes away, he goes to the Father. Last Sunday, we celebrated the ascension of our Lord. We know that now he rules all things because he sits next to his Father at the right hand. That he's now bringing a new creation into this world. He has established the kingdom of God and now is establishing it all over the world. He seeks to restore what God had created in the first place in this earth. He sees that as good news. 